My uh, next guest is a truly fascinating gentleman. He happens to be 93 years old, and he is the father of public relations. In the course of his 70-year career, some of his clients have been Presidents Wilson, Hoover, Coolidge, and Eisenhower, Thomas Edison, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Enrico Caruso. It's a pleasure to welcome Dr. Edward Bernays. Hi, Doctor. Good to see you. Come on up over here. There you go. Nephew of Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays was born in Vienna, Austria on November 22, 1891 and was dubbed the father of public relations. After he learned how to manipulate the irrational mind of consumers through various methods such as propaganda, consumerism, and capitalism, he published two books, Crystallizing Public Opinion in 1923 and Propaganda in 1928, that pioneered the study of public relations. Bernays became the first industry leader to be invited as an instructor at New York University. Bernays would embark with President Woodrow Wilson to the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, where he witnessed white propaganda towards Wilson as a hero of the masses. Then, to my surprise, they asked me to go over with, with Woodrow Wilson to the Peace Conference. And at the age of 1926, I was in Paris for the entire time of the peace conference. According to Bernays, propaganda is simply a means to shape public opinion for any purpose. This experience led Bernays to use propaganda to the masses in the form of public relations. Before the Great Depression, Bernays took advantage of public relations image by marketing consumer products through emotions, overpowering wants over needs, and the use of status symbols. I decided that if you could use propaganda for war, you could certainly use it for peace. And propaganda got to be a bad word because of the Germans using it. So what I did was to try to find some other words so we found the word Council on Public Relations. After the stock market crash, Franklin D. Roosevelt thought Bernays' influence was dangerous and he considered the American population capable of rational mind. Roosevelt set forth in using public opinion polling as a means of both democracy and public relations with political figures. Bernays turned it around by mixing capitalism and democracy during the 1939 World's Fair in New York. He went as far as collaborating with General Motors in providing a module of Democracy, City, America's Future, to garner back politicians in capitalism manners. This event managed to marry democracy to the idea of capitalism and that progress comes from both working together. On one hand, there's no denying the impact Bernays left behind as an influential figure inside and outside the public relations industry within the last century. Tapping into psychology and human emotions, Bernays succeeded in connecting groups of people with brands nationwide before the fast-paced reach of online communications. The biggest example is the positive reaction to the Lights Golden Jubilee campaign for General Electric Company in 1929. Bernays was able to orchestrate the largest worldwide event of his career using radio communications to have listeners turn off their electric lights and switch them back on at the same time, thus lighting up the world. However, Elites and scholars point to Bernays' techniques as troubling. Critics warn about the media's powerful direct effects on individuals and how the media is controlled by gatekeepers that put personal economic interests above the public's interest. And they were an American owner, and they manufactured and they saved, and they ate what they had to, and the people shopped for what they needed. And while the very rich may have bought things they didn't need, most people did not. And Mazur envisioned a break with that where you would have things that you didn't actually need, but you wanted, as opposed to needed. Public relations became a way for business and government to control the population, not as participants in the governing of the country, but as complacent consumerists. The effects of Bernays and his methods can still be viewed today, with PR campaigns and advertisers appealing to the consumer's conception of their ideal self. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. Now, come back and see us. Will you do that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Have a good weekend. Well, no, don't leave now. Oh. That's it, folks. Have a nice weekend. Come back Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye.